Let's talk about the RC time constant. So what I have here is a fairly large capacitor and you should be able to see that it's 22,000 microfarads, so that's 0 0.022 farads, and it can go up to 100 volts. Let's see what I have it charged at now. I think I'm pretty close to the 100 volts. Ninety-nine. Perfect. We'll call it 100 volts. So I've got a 0 0.022 farads and 100 volts. This is a 60 watt light bulb designed to run at 120 volts. If you calculate the resistance of that guy, you'll get 240 ohms. And here's the circuit. We have our charged capacitor. Right now the switch is open. There's nothing connected to the light bulb. And then the resistor is, uh, is our light bulb. Now, we know that for a light bulb, the resistance does vary with heat and temperature. But um, for this demonstration, we're going to ignore that and treat it as a constant resistance. Also, the, um, the current and here's the formula for the RC time constant, and it's how the current should vary with time. And the current pretty much determines the brightness of the light bulb. So what we're going to do now is, we're going to do the experiment, and then we'll do the explanation. So I'm going to connect the capacitor. In other words, I'm going to close the switch. And when I do that, we'll get an initial burst of current, and the current will decrease exponentially with time. Let's count from the start to about one-third of its brightness. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand, seven one eight. So I would say it was about at five seconds. So let, let's check some things out. First of all, let's talk about what's happening. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the experiment. So let's put it here. Experiment. We saw that the, uh, the current level was approximately one third of the initial. I'll just put in five seconds. So let's put it. T equals five seconds. Okay, so let's remember that because we'll come back to it. Now, here's the RC time constant formula. And if we graph this, well, it starts off at I naught because at T equals zero. When time is zero, then we have E to the minus zero, that's one, so then it's just I naught. What is I naught, by the way? Well, initially, when I close this switch, the current just comes flowing from this side to that side. So we get current going like this. That is when the switch is closed. And we know that this is at 100 volts. It's going over the resistor. So I naught is simply Ohm's law, V over R. 100 volts divided by the resistance, 240 ohms, and well, that's 10 24ths. We can get an exact value here. Oops. 0.42. So that's the current I naught, starts at that value. But as time moves on, it follows this exponential curve and looks something like that. Now, when, when T is equal to RC, then we have I equals I naught E to something divided by itself. That's just 1, E to the minus 1, which is I naught over E. E is approximately 3, it's you know, 2.8, blah, blah, blah. So that's approximately one-third 
of its initial value. Well, that will happen right here at RC. Again, this is the t-axis, this is the current axis. And so right about here, we expect to see one-third the initial current. Great. Well, let's calculate our RC time constant and see if it comes out to about five seconds. And we have our values here. It's uh, R is just 240. So RC is just 240 ohms multiplied by 0 0.022 farads. And an ohm times a farad. Oh, let's get a prettier looking ohm here. An ohm times a farad gives you seconds. So let's plug that in, 0.022 times 1240, and it's about 5 seconds. Pretty good. That's what we saw. So, experiment agrees pretty well with theory. We did everything approximately and um, to gain a better understanding of the RC time constant.